Hello. In a previous video, I repaired and upgraded my Amiga 2000 with a hard disk, 8 megs of fast RAM and an RGB to HDMI adapter. Now this Amiga 2000 is a revision 6.2 and as such only supports 1 megabyte of chip RAM. Now being a desktop machine, I'm more likely to use it for productivity applications such as graphic and sound. And the more chip RAM you have, the better. Now later revisions came with 2 megabytes, as did my Amiga 500 Plus. So in this video, we're going to look at performing a full 2 megabyte ECS upgrade on the machine. Firstly, let's have a look at what that actually means. And depending on where you read, the nicknames for some of these parts get a little bit mixed up. The early OCS Amigas came with the standard Agnus chip, also known as the Thin Agnus, which, being 18-bit, only supported 512k of chip RAM. This included the Amiga 1000 up to and including revision 5 of the A500, and up to and including revision 4.5 of the Amiga 2000. The next revision of the Agnus chip, dubbed the FAT or FATTER Agnus, which supported 1 megabyte of chip RAM via 19-bit pointers, was included in the Amiga 500s from Revision 6, the Amiga 2000s from Revision 6, and the CDTV. Now there are some other features added to this revision, but we don't need to know about those details. Booting into sysinfo, we can see that this version is what we have installed, sitting quite happily at 1 megabyte of chip RAM. On my Amiga 2000 motherboard, it's labelled as the Fat Lady. The final version of Agnus released was the 2 megabyte Agnus, which had 20-bit pointers, and as such was unofficially named the Super Agnus and sometimes the Super Obese Agnus. Revisions of this came with the Amiga 3000, the Amiga 500 Plus and the Amiga 600. Unfortunately, these different versions of Agnus, whilst being the same size, are not 100% pin compatible with each other, partly due to the increasing number of bits, so you can't just swap the chip and expect it to work. And aside from that problem, the extra 1 megabyte of chip RAM has to come from somewhere too. So this means we need some kind of adapter board. Now there are several different ways to do this. The majority of them include a second PCB that usually clips into the Agnus socket, often called the Mega Chip. This does all the hard work and includes the extra 1 megabyte of RAM directly on the board. Now these can be quite hard to come by and expensive, but there are a few modern recreations available, such as the A500 2 meg chip RAM project by Matt Harlem which shows a PCB that you can install in place of the Agnus socket. This time, you have to remove the socket and install header pins, but that makes it more secure and less likely to pop off. It also makes it cheaper, as those chip socket plugs are hard to come by. However, after recently ordering an RGB to HDMI adapter from Linux Jedi, I found there was a variant of this adapter board available too, designed to be easier to solder. So I placed an order for this PCB and its required components, and at the same time, I found a compatible 2 megabyte Agnus. Now the other thing needed is an ECS version of the Denise chip. This will give us access to the higher resolution productivity screen modes. The good news here is though, no mods are needed. This one is a straightforward swap. And after a few weeks, the blank PCBs and the required parts arrived, leaving the job of assembling it. <laughs> part was to solder the extra 1 megabyte of RAM as the pins bent under the chip. 
In the end, I decided to apply lots of flux, apply solder to the pads on the PCB and use a heat gun to solder it in place. Now solder paste would have been ideal here, but I really haven't had any luck with it. So next, on to the A2000 and this will require me removing the main board. With that removed, we now need to desolder the Agnus socket. Now this is not for the faint of heart. I wouldn't want to do this without a desoldering moo gun due to all the pins. To remove it, I'll start by adding a fresh coat of solder to each pin. One pin got a little bit stuck there and needed a little help. Still, the socket is actually in really good condition, so we could reuse it if needed. The next step is just a matter of soldering some pin headers. To make them fit the board, I've had to remove the pins in the four corners. Each revision of the Agnus chip used an increasing number of bits, and this one, being 20 bits, needs access to the A20 address line, not present on this socket. So we have to add a wire. Luckily, this is easy as there's several places on the board where you can get this signal from, and I've soldered a single pin header here so I can add a wire. This makes the entire project easy to remove if I ever need to, leaving me the last job of swapping the Denise chip around before reassembling the machine. Well that just leaves testing this mod out, so like before I'll boot up into sysinfo and see if it detects the new Agnes, Denise and 1 meg extra of chip RAM totalling 2 meg. And it does! Fantastic! It worked first time! Now with all that heat I used while soldering in the RAM chip I want to make sure it's not damaged, so I'm going to run the Amiga Test Kit memory tester. After a few minutes of various RAM tests, the full 2MB checks out OK, and so does the 8MB of fast RAM I already had installed. One thing I've noticed here after recording this was the noise now in the picture. Now this picture is coming from the RGB to HDMI converter, but the noise was easy to fix after simply recalibrating it. I suspect this subtle change is as a result of the new Denise chip, maybe due to tolerances of components like capacitors and resistors inside it. So there we have it! My Amiga 2000 is now a fully working ECS system, which is great for me. Now it's not the easiest of mods, and if you're not confident with soldering, I'd recommend getting a pre-made board and maybe one that has the chip socket plug on the back. All that said, I was lucky and mine worked perfectly first time. I hope you found this video interesting. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.